Hello and welcome to this video. It's Spencer from Lithium Battery Systems. In this video, we're talking about one of our newest products, actually, um, the Slimline Lithium Battery. Now, this is a 12 volt, 110 amp, amp hour lithium battery. Um, there's nothing particularly special about this battery, but what is special about it is obviously its shape, uh, dimensions, and size. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the physical characteristics of this lithium battery. Well, as you can see there, it's uh, 635 mil long, 265 mil wide, and 50 mil deep. This is the, the best and most perhaps unusual aspect of the battery is its dimensions. Um, we deliberately made it in this size so it could easily fit uh, underneath a seat, for example, in a four-wheel drive or a vehicle, uh, behind a rear uh, seat in a four-wheel drive, or even in the, in the back of a, of a four-wheel drive um, to slide under or next to a camping fridge, for example. This is fast becoming our most popular product because of this aspect, because of the unique shape and dimensions. Another aspect of this battery is its weight. Uh, it's just 11 kilos. Now, when you compare that against, um, say, 110 amp hour lead acid battery, you'd be looking at at least 35 kilos. So this is a third of the weight, um, and you, there's more usable amp hours. So in this battery, and in typical in our batteries, you can discharge down to 90% um, depth of discharge. So you've got around uh, 90, 95 amp hours of usable capacity for 11 kilos of weight. Now compare that against your typical lead acid uh, deep cycle battery, plus 30 kilos, easily 32, 33, even above 35 kilos. And really with the lead acid, you only can use 50% of its depth of discharge as usable and power capacity. So far ahead with lithium. What else? The enclosure is two mil aluminium. Um, that's important, we feel, for um, two reasons. One, for mobile vehicles, so um, four-wheel drives, camper trailers, RVs, vehicles that are moving at speed, you want to protect the battery. A lot of lithium batteries, particularly from overseas, well, mostly from overseas, come with uh, ABS or polycarbonate or HDPE enclosures. We feel an aluminium enclosure made right here in Australia um, gives uh, mechanical protection to the battery and the cells internally. It also acts as a heat sink. So if you're drawing uh, the maximum uh, 100 amps from this battery, the aluminium enclosure acts to protect the battery from um, overheat and, and dissipates the heat uh, accordingly through the enclosure. Now let's talk about the, uh, the battery itself. This particular model, in fact there's, there's two models in this range, in the um, 110 amp hour slim range. Um, there's the DCS version, which is this version, that includes an internal DC-DC charger, and then there's the non-DCS version. Um, so it doesn't include the internal DC-DC charger. So I'm going to talk about this battery and then I'll explain the differences with the um, standard simpler version of this battery. So as you can see, if we turn it on its side, you can see there includes two Anderson plugs on the side. Now the blue Anderson plug is where you connect your um, DC input from an alternator for example, raw DC input, and the internal charger is, is designed at 20 amps, so it will charge the internal cells at 20 amps. And, and regulate the raw uh, DC input um, using the volt sensing relay that's built into the charger. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. The other Anderson plug is just a standard um, gray Anderson plug and that can be used as an input or output. So you could connect there your charging source and or load source um, and that just basically acts as the terminals on a normal battery. So let's talk a little bit more detail about the um, DC-DC charger. 
So inside this battery is a battery management system and that helps to protect the cells from overcharge, over discharge, balances the cells and that's normal. Um, this particular version is a DCS version, includes a 20 amp DC DC charger. So you connect via the Blue Anderson plug directly to your car alternator or start battery. So it takes raw DC input. And then what you do is what's called trimming the pot or trimming the potentiometer. Uh, potentially underneath here, there is a small dial. So with a Phillips head screwdriver, you'd adjust the variable resistor or, or potentiometer as it's called, hence trimming the pot. And that allows you to optimize the voltage at which the charger kicks in. Because depending on how far you're away from your alternator, so this might be in a camper trailer or the back of a four-wheel drive or ute, and depending on the cable size, depends, um, tells you how much voltage you might drop along that cable. Therefore, you might need to trim the potentiometer in order to optimize what point the charger kicks in. And there's an LED under here as well, which tells you when the charger is charging and when it's not. So that's really what you do. Once you've set it, it's set and forget and you'll never have to touch it again. So that's the DCS version. The non-DCS version, instead of the blue Anderson plug, it, it contains two gray Andersons. So it gives you some flexibility. Maybe you can use one Anderson to charge and the second Anderson to uh, run your loads off. It just gives you some flexibility there and um, providing two gray Andersons instead of one blue Anderson and one gray. The BMS can accommodate 100 amp charge um, continuous and 100 amp discharge continuous, peaking and surging at up to 200 amps. So that gives you some flexibility. Most BMSs in lithium batteries um, are restricted to about 50 amps. Our BMS allows you to run 100 amps continuous uh, on the discharge and 100 amp continuous on the charge.